Welcome back to the Gem Cutter's Craft. My name is Justin K. Prim, and today I'm coming to you from the UK so that we can look at one of the last Victorian faceting machines that still exist today. The first jam peg came to Britain in the 1820s. This revolutionary gem cutting tool was developed only a few years prior in France and is first described in C.P. Brard's Mineralogie Appliquée aux Arts in 1821. The noteworthy British mineralogist John Maul was the first person to describe this object in English in the 1827 edition of his book Familiar Lessons in Mineralogy and Geology. As soon as the jam peg came to London, it became the machine of choice for professional lapidaries who had previously used a hand crank table and quadrant handpiece to cut stones. However, this type of table was not only used by professional cutters in London. Throughout the 19th century, we find British books giving us some of the first references to hobbyist gem cutting. Before the 1800s, there wasn't a culture of non-professional cutters, but throughout the 1800s, this begins to change. John Ma shows us an image of his home lapidary setup for the gentleman lapidary who could cut and polish gems in their parlors. People all over Britain were getting interested in the idea that you could go out into nature, whether that be the beach or the forest, and find and collect colorful rough stones and then take them home and turn them into something even more beautiful. In the Midlands, there was one family, the Harper Crews, who fit this profile exactly. The Harper Crew family were residents of Cock Abbey, a country manor house just outside of Derby. Built in 1703, Cock Abbey was home to several generations of the Harper Crew family, but I want to specifically look at Sir John Harper Crew and his son, Sir Vonsey Harper Crew, who lived in the house from 1844 to 1924. John and his son Vonsey collected all types of things, and we can still see them in Cock Abbey today. Birds, books, shells, fossils, and of course, gemstones. When Vonsey died, Calk Abbey was closed up like a time capsule and sat there for over 60 years with all of its treasures hidden inside it. The house was bought by the National Trust in the 1980s and reawakened as a museum which displayed its Victorian and early 20th century contents. John and Vonsey were not only collectors of stones, but they were also gentlemen lapidaries. Not only did they have a parlor full of stones, just as John Ma described in his books, but they also had the exact type of hand crank gem cutting machine that John Ma shows us in his later work. This type of machine was frequently shown in British publications throughout the 19th century, such as the Cyclopedia of Useful Arts in 1854 and the Encyclopedia Britannica from 1857 onward. As we can see, the drawings depicted here are an exact copy of the machine that we can see in Cock Abbey. This machine is the last of its kind. Thanks to the unique history of Cock Abbey, this machine was preserved when the house was closed up in the 1920s. It's been sitting safe inside for over a hundred years when other benches were used and then discarded or destroyed. The machine that we see here is quite a simple device. The left hand turns the crank, which causes the lap to rotate, while the right hand controls the stone. You can see that the wooden jam peg is missing from the machine, but we can clearly see the metal peg that it's supposed to sit on. It's possible that the Harper Crew family never needed the jam peg head, as all the stones in their parlor collection are either cabochons or polished slabs. No faceted stones appear in the house, which means they likely didn't know how to facet gemstones. This would be a common situation as learning to facet is quite a complicated procedure on this machine and would have taken many years of practice. Cabbing on the other hand is quite easy on this machine and could have been done by anyone with just a little bit of practice. This Victorian cutting machine is the last of its kind and the Harper Crew family are possibly one of the last families of gentlemen lapidaries of the old school. Starting in the 1940s, new types of fastening machines arrived in Britain from America and kicked off a new wave of hobby cutters who had little to no knowledge of the old way of cutting with these hand crank benches. This new wave of faceting culture still exists today in the UK. 
I hope you found this video adventurous and enjoyable. It's incredible that we can still go inside of a museum in Britain and find a fascinating machine from a previous era and from previous generations of hobbyist gem cutters. I look forward to finding out more mysteries and more history in the Isle of Britain as I travel around and look at the history of British faceting. Thanks for watching and see you next time. This has been Justin K. Prim coming to you live from Britain and I'll see you next time on the Gem Cutter's Craft.